Hi, my name is Diane Wilcox and I'm a nurse practitioner. I care for patients with COPD. Educating patients about their disease and their medications used to treat their disease is one of the most important ways you can keep patients from being hospitalized. The following module will focus on best practice for educating patients. First, there is a difference between literacy and health literacy. Literacy is the ability to read and to write. Health literacy is the ability to read, understand, and to act on health information. For example, patients' health literacy determines their ability to read an appointment card, read prescription information, understand your recommendations, complete health insurance forms, and most importantly, understand informed consent. Studies have shown that up to 80% of medical information is forgotten immediately. Worse, up to 50% of that information is incorrect. Patients often do not understand the words that clinicians use, such as chronic, spirometry, sputum, dyspnea. Patients' limited ability to read and understand health information can translate into poor health outcomes. When educating patients, some key points are to use simple words, avoid medical jargon, introduce two or three teaching points at a time, and don't forget to involve the patient, the family, and significant others in teaching sessions. When using print educational material, it's helpful to use sixth grade reading level as the highest literacy level. Use pictures to demonstrate your points. Use large print, lots of white space, along with both words and pictures, and consider standardizing teaching materials throughout the community. The Teach Back method is an effective method to promote health literacy. Teach Back explains to the patient what they need to know in a manner that they understand. Patient understanding is confirmed when they explain it back to you. In order to evaluate your patient's understanding, ask questions like, I want to be sure that I explained your medications correctly. Can you tell me how you're going to take this medication when you're at home? Or we reviewed a lot about your COPD today, and I want to make sure that I explain things clearly. Let's review what we discussed. What are the three things that will help you manage your COPD at home? It's important to not ask just the simple question of, do you understand? Hi, Steve. I wanted to go over how to use this inhaler that I've prescribed for you today. Okay. So there's a couple of pieces to it. This is the inhaler device. And the second part to this is a capsule that goes inside the inhaler device. The capsule comes inside this sort of foil wrapper. And you would take it out. And then you would peel it back. And so a capsule is sort of like this plastic medicine and inside this medicine is a dry powder. Okay. All right. So first I want you to open up the inhaler. So there's a cover to it. That's it. Next is the mouthpiece. Open that up. Oh, okay. Inside you're going to see a place that's where the pill goes. Mm -hmm. This green button on the side, if you push it, you'll see that there's these oh, yeah. stabbers. Okay. They're going to poke a hole inside the capsule, then you're going to put the inhaler device to your mouth. You're going to breathe it in and get the medicine deep into your lungs. Okay. So let me hand you the capsule. Just drop it in yeah, and you put it inside Then you close it on up. Before you inhale the medicine, I usually tell people to take a deep breath and blow out all their air. Then put the inhaler to their mouth and inhale in. Okay, okay. Inhale deep, and then hold your breath as long as you can, five to ten seconds. Okay. So, show me how you do this. Push this little button. Yeah. Yep. Push the button. This way, I, I know that um, you'll be able to do it on your own at home. Okay. Okay, I just open that up and open that up. 
The biggest trick is getting it out of the foil. <laughs> I'll just drop it in there. drop it out and throw it away. That's it. Okay. I think you got it. I think so. <laughs> Some important points about patient education are to listen and not judge. Connect with your patient. Ask what's important to you. Understand their unique challenges, motivations, and goals. And give recommendations that are specific to them. TeachBack puts the accountability for understanding on the provider, not the patient. If you identify a patient is unable to teach back, keep trying. Repetition may improve understanding. Involve the family member or significant others. Or this patient may need frequent and comprehensive outpatient follow-up. A patient who has difficulty with teach back may have poor adherence with your lifestyle recommendations and with medications. Key points to remember when you are educating patients are to use simple language and avoid jargon. Use the teach back method to ensure patient comprehension. Listen, don't judge, and identify your patient specific challenges.